My name is Joe Reichard. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Sab Doctor. Today we're going to be discussing why your 2007 through 2009 and potentially 2010 or 11 Saab 9.3 with a 2.0 turbo engine may start rough in cold weather and what you need to do to fix it and how you can diagnose it. Stay tuned. Okay, so behind me we have two 2008 Saab 9.3 heads and they're both from cars with valve issues. Now the 07 through 0993 with a 20 turbo is known to have valve issues and the 2010 and 2011 cars are also included in the TSB from Saab. I'm going to show you kind of what happens to the valves and then I'll show you how to diagnose it and explain to you what you have to do to repair it. So what happens is the intake valves actually wear down on the edges. What it does is over time, they were made of a soft material and over time they wear down to the point where it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually seal correctly anymore and then you start getting low compression which in cold weather or on the first start of the day will actually make the car run poorly. So let's get in here and we'll take a look at these valves a bit and I'll explain what happened to the car that this head was in and what happened to the car that this head was in. They had two similar yet different failures. Okay, so this side is the intake valves. Now let me just get in here a little bit more. It might be tough to see, but if you look around the edge of it, you can actually see, see, you see this flaking off here? This is where the edge of the valve has actually worn, and that's how, why these don't seal correctly anymore. So this one had low compression in all four of the cylinders. As you can see, there's wear right here. There's a little bit of wear right there. You can see this chipping and flaking off here. Now I didn't pull these valves out, but if I did, the edges would all be rough and sharp because what they did was, because this is, they used a soft material, as it wore against the head, it actually wore down when it was hitting against the aluminum while it was running. So what you do to fix this is you actually take the head off, you get the valves machine, or I'm sorry, you get the head machine and you either replace the valves or you can get a 2003 through 2006 head and actually use that. You have to make sure to flip, flip flop the cams out of your current head with that. So that's what happened with this head. And you can just see, you know, you can see here, this, this metal just flaked right off. This is a, uh, this is valve, you know, valve material right here, and that's why those weren't sealing up. I actually replaced the head on this car. This was my sister-in-law's 08. I replaced it with a head from an 03. We got all the machine work done, did new valve guides, put it in, and the car is running perfect. It is actually the one that I used in my uh, oil change video. It's the blue car. So now, here is my friend Logan's girlfriend's car. This is, this is her 08. Now, this one had a few more miles on it. My sister-in-law's car had 130. This has 150-ish, 150, 158, somewhere in there. And you can actually, you can see, you know, the same way. Now this one's got a lot of soot. We actually think there might have, probably was another issue with this engine on top of it. Like it may have overheated before or something like that and the previous owner covered it up. Not 100% sure. But you can see that, it's funny, th we did a, we did a um, compression test on this one and this one actually turned out really good beforehand. You can actually see the voids in between the valve and the side here where this wasn't sealing right. Now that might be hard to see. However, its detrimental failure was this cracked exhaust valve, which is not normal, but does happen. So when, it, when the car got brought over by me, when I did the compression test on it, it had zero, um, it had zero compression in this cylinder. Now you see this new spark plug here. That's because we were like, okay, what could it be? She was actually pretty far away and we were trying to diagnose what the problem was. Flip flop coils, change the spark plug, and it just was not running right. So you can just see these are all caked up. And I'm gonna guess that, you know, maybe this engine had ring issues or something like that. But you know, that's another thing. This is another reason why I normally suggest us to grab a different head because if you grab a different head, you get, you know, you have all the exhaust valves and the intake valves from the older car, and I just feel like those are a bit more stout. So now, how do you diagnose it? That's the next question. 
let's uh, go use my wife's 2010-93 as a uh, demonstration car. Okay, so what you're going to need here is you're going to need your star bits. Now this one uses hex because we replaced them with hex heads. So I believe it is a T30 for this. Uh, these are a five millimeter because that's what I ended up using. You're going to need a needle nose pliers, spark plug tool, a 10 millimeter to remove your coil pack. Last but not least, a compression tester. I like, I personally like this Bosch unit because it has this, you know, this long, um, shaft, I don't have a better word for that, that you can put down, you know, put down in the, in the galley and you can screw it in a whole lot easier. And then you just clip this on the top, super easy. So let's get to taking this apart. So one thing that I always do is I always remove all four coils when I'm going to do this because I want to make sure that there is no chance of the car starting while I'm trying to do the compression test. Once the coils are out, remove a spark plug, and we will start with, we will start on this side. Now I've never actually done a compression test on this engine, so this will be interesting. Take your compression tester shaft, and slowly screw it into the uh, spark plug hole. Make sure to tighten it down. You want to make sure that the O-ring at the bottom snugs up and seals. Then you take your compression tester, put it on the top. And then before trying to crank it over, the last thing you want to do is, before you crank it over, you want to remove the fuel pump fuse. So I'm going to do that now. So you remove the thing that goes to the battery, you move the, remove the top, and then at least in the 2010-93, it is fuse number two, it is a 20 amp. So we're just going to pull that and set it aside on the battery. Okay, so at this point I have you zoomed in on the gauge. What you do is you take the car and you crank it over for five seconds. Two, three, four, five. Once you've cranked it over for five seconds, you take a look at what it says. Perfect. This one says, and let me just bring this camera in. Perfect. This one says 210. Now you want to do that and you want to repeat this across all four cylinders. And actually, you know what? We're going to do that. Let's see the health of this engine. All right, let's check cylinder number two. One, two. All right, now as long as they're within 10%, you're good. So I would say that's about 200, so we're good. The other one was 210. So let's reverse this and do cylinder number three. All right, number three is 210, or about 200 as well, hair under 210, so we're still within that 10%. Let's get this all reversed and do number four. One, two, three, four, five. And there we are, right around that 200 mark. So that would give this engine a clean bill of health in my opinion, especially since it hasn't been having any valve issues. So now at this point, let's just take it, put it back how it was. Don't forget to put your fuel pump fuse back in and put everything back together.
All right, and like I said, don't forget to put that fuse back in. Put the cover back on. And of course, your battery vent back in. Now normally at this point I'd put the battery cover back on, but the car's in storage so I have the battery tender on and I'm going to leave that off. Now if you're still experiencing problems after doing a compression test, you can always do a leak down test to check for issues with rings, you know, things that the compression test wouldn't pick up. Just so you know, this is a cold compression test. The car was at 45 degrees, or sorry, 40 degrees, that's what I keep the shop at. I had just turned the heat on, so it definitely wasn't up to temperature at that point. You have to make sure, cold compression test, first time you start, you know, started for the day or before you started for the day, that's when you want to do the compression test on the car. Um, the compression tester, I will leave a link in the description below. That is a Bosch unit that I'm using. I'm sure there's other ones out there. I actually just grabbed that from uh, the parts store, so it should be readily available, easy to get. If you have any questions, either comment below or hit me at one of my social links. Uh, don't forget, if you like this, if this helped you, like, share, and subscribe, and sob on, folks.